Welcome to Fringa Tech Lab. This is a free course by the YouTube algorithm. Please comment, like, share and subscribe to the channel in helping to create more of these kind of tutorials. Just sit back, relax and enjoy the training. Let's dive in into the tutorial. Now we are going to change the front color. When I talk about the front color, we all know what the front is now that the color of the text that's what we are going to change the color of now to change the color of a font you will make sure that you highlight the font you want to change its color so when you come here we have our the a with a color narrate you can click on this but when you look at the color the, the color that is that this letter is black but when you click on it you are going to get the same black letter that, the, that black color that is we have here so you click on the drop down arrow that is attached to it most of the time the tools that comes along with an arrow attached to them they have another sub instructions that is, is within them so you click on the drop down arrow we have different kind of what colors here the one that you prefer you can just select it from there you can see now now the down here has changed to the green color so always be sure that you use the arrows that is attached to these um tools so if you want to change, you prefer to go by this way, you just maintain this one. Now there are other things that I want us to talk about. Um, we have the underline, we've learned about the underline. When I click on the underline to, is to highlight this for me, what type of underline do I need? Click on the drop down arrow. We have the double line, single line, the one even the one with the dash, any one of these you can pick them. So if I take any of these, and I want to change the color for only the underline. You only go to where the colors are. What color do you prefer to use? I need this one, so you just click on this. It's going to also change the color for the underline for you. So this is what we are going to deal with. Now the next thing I want to, us to talk about is change keys. When you talk about changing of keys, that means changing from upper keys to lower keys. So let me use the text here as an example. You highlight what is here. You come to where we have the cut the upper letter E with the lower letter E. Just click on the drop down arrow. We have a sentence keys. This means that your sentence, the first letter, is going to be in the form of what capital letters. The rest is going to be small letters, like the way we type. When you are normally type, we use capital letters to start, and the rest is small letters. That is what called a sentence keys. So you can see uh, letter F. It's in the form of what upper keys, the rest are in what lower keys. Now, when you go to lower keys, meaning all the letters have to be in what lower keys, you can see the whole thing is in what the lower keys for you. When you go to the next one, which is the upper keys, meaning to change all of them to upper keys. So, mostly when you are typing, you let your typing or your text should be in a lower keys so that when you, there is any mistake within it, you can see it and correct it, especially when your work is in upper keys, you are typing. When there is an error or typing mistakes, spellings of those thoughts, you are not going to see it. But when it is in lower case or small uh, sentence case, you can be able to identify and correct those things. So when you start typing and your work is in lower case, never mind, maybe you want it to be in upper case and you start in lower case, just finish your typing, do your correction, then you can convert it, change it to upper case how you want it. So we have our upper case. Then we have capitalized each word, meaning the first letters will be capital letters, the rest is going to be small letters. So when I click, you can see the F is what capital letters, the T here is also capital letters. So each word starting letters is going to be capital letters. Now you come to the toggle case, meaning the first letters rather is going to be small letters, the rest will be what capital letters. So you can see how it is. So these are how the layout of you using the change keys. So take note of this. Now there is some letters this H2, the 102, H2O, CO2, and 52 are some things I want us to talk about. When you come under um we have what we call the subscript and the superscript. Subscripts and superscripts are things that we use. They are tools that we use in science and mathematics. If I want um, 10 
base 2. I will enter 103. Then highlight the one I want it to be the base. I want the 2 should be the base. So what I do is I highlight only the 2. After highlighting the 2, you go to this symbol, which is what SAP. You need to send it to the down as SAP script. You click on it to reduce it. That's how we go about it. Then when you come to H2O, this one is supposed to be H2O. H2O, the two is supposed to be at the down. So you only highlight the two and take the subscripts. When you come to this one also, we have what we call CO2. The CO2, the two has to come to the down. So you just use your subscripts to do that. So this is how we insert this. Then if I want um, 5 exponent 2 or 5 raised to the power 2, you highlight this, then you use the superscript. The superscript is to go up. So that one is send it up for you. So anytime that you are doing any typing work, that you need this type of uh, features in your typing. This is how we go about them. We use the superscript and the subscript to insert this kind of layers of uh, text. Now, another way of getting to this thing is another way of doing that so we can be, we shall go through this one. So let me take them back. If I want it to go off, you just see that the tool is active. Just click on it to come back. When I highlight, click on them to take me back. Or I can use the undo to take me back. But I prefer to just use the same tool again. Highlight. When you highlight, you see that it is active. You just take it off. And now they are all inactive. So you can go by it. Now, let's come to the using of the wizard itself. The wizard also, you need to highlight your text. Let me just go by this first one. When I, this is where the wizard is. You just click on this small arrow here to take you to the tool. What do we want to work on? This is what we highlight. So the one you highlight it to be at where the preview is. This is the preview. So whatever changes you'll be doing, it will affect this preview here for you. We have our font. These are where we have the font um, types. So what font, the font, the type of font that you take is what you're going to see here. I see it's changing. So what font do you want? You can scroll. These are the type of fonts that you are seeing. Now, we have what we call the font style, where we have our regular means it should be the way it was the normal format. It should be in that order. But when you select italic, you need to slant it. You can see the text has slanted. Bold it to make it thicker. Bold and italic mean it will make it uh, thicker and well, slanted. But in the form of italic, that is how it looks. Then we have the font size. If the size here is too small for us, we can select 20. So we can see it's also bigger here for us. So when we think that this is okay for us, we can click on okay. I say that the changes apply. And the, for the bold and I thought we can see that now the two of them are active. We did not pick it from here. It was the other side, but that's it. it's applied to this one here. So now let's go back. Since the highlight is still there, we go back to the two again. The wizard. So this one is like the front property dialog box. This is the front property, front property dialog box. So when you get there, we can do any changes to it. We want to underline, there's no underline here. You can come to underline, this underline. You give the underline to it. What color do you want to give to the underline? You can also change the color from here, or this is the color, you can see it. Then the text is a what color do you want to give to the text? You see that we have what font color. <coughs> you click on the drop down arrow. We have different type of colors that you can just click on it. See so the color is being applied to our font. So we have what we call strike through. If you want a line to go through, a strike through, like maybe you did something, you just want to use a line to cross through, like the way you cancel. We use the strike tool to do that. We have a double strike tool. So with any of them that you want to use, you just go by that one. So when you're done and you want to take it off, you can just click on it again to go off. So you can see we have our um, this small case, call piece, and hidden case, and our superscript and subscripts. We shall be coming to them also and see how they work.
So you can see all the changes that are going to affect this particular document that I see. Now let's come to the um, the one o two. So let me highlight the two again. We go to our front dialog box. When we go to the front dialog box, we have our subscript. What I want you to be should be should go to the down. So we call it sub subscript. So you can see how the two is. When I click on your the changes, I see the two has queues downwards. So that is what we call the subscript. The effect has taken place. We click on you can see it has moved it up. The same thing applied to the two here. So we highlight it. Let's go to the same direction. Then you select subscript. It will also take it up for you. When I want to do deal with the exponent or the five raised to the power. So you just go to the same place, which is the dialog, that is the front dialog box or the property, select superscript, then it will take you up <coughs> to the top. So this is how we do about um, dealing with the subscripts and the superscript. If you know how to go about this, you don't need to feel of, uh, find any difficulties working with science and mathematics questions or any document that you need to type in science or in uh, mathematics. So this is how we change the font color, the font type, the font size, then how to format the text. So what we did for holding the heading and this text, we can apply it for the whole body. Just you highlight all of them or a portion where you want to just highlight it and do it. We are just using the heading and this one as an example so that we can see what we want to do with. Then when you come to uh, um, that is the alignment also, we use the body, which we highlighted the whole thing. You can see is on um, justify. Justify is to make the edge here straight for you and here to straight. You can see the whole thing is in line. But when I select um, left alignment, you can see how the end here is it's been in different order. So for the justifier, it's supposed to stretch the two edges here and here for you. That's the work of the justifier. So when you do a, do a typing work and it's not up to the end of it, you are not going to see the effectiveness of what the justifier. You make sure that the text has to get to the end and drop. And now when you are applying your justifier, you are going to see the effect, effectiveness of, of it. So uh, mostly like this kind of official document, we use the just, justifier to stretch the two edges for us so that everything is going to be in a nice format. When you say you use the left, the left you can see how it has positioned it, it has changed the direction. Center will make the whole thing be at the center position. When you select the left, it starts the whole thing from the left side and drops whenever it gets to the right side. That is the work of the, the left alignment. So it's good that we are able to go through this um, formatting aspect. So the more that you practice it, the more that you know it. There are some two of the tools here that I want to talk about. Then we move on to another topic. We have what we call the highlight type is here. Anytime that you want to highlight, we have what we call highlight and we have the highlighter. That one is to just highlight a particular portion of your text or your sentence or maybe your document that you prefer, you realize that this place is very, very important for me. So you use the highlighter to do that. When you click on the drop down arrow, we have different uh, colors of highlighters. Then if you don't want it, it's just a no uh, color. So we can use this one. When you click on it, click on your highlighter, you come to this place, you can see that the mouse pointer has changed. So you see the eye beam is there with the pencil where you want to highlight maybe together. So you just click there and move your hand. This is the highlight. It's different from the normal highlight that we highlight to apply changes to a text or a word. But this one is to highlight this portion so that any time that we are looking for that information, as soon as our eye goes straight to it, have an eye contact, then we can what identify what we are looking for.
So that is the work of what the highlighter. If I don't want it again, I can go back and select no highlighter. I'll come back again, click and drag around on top of it. Then it will go off on. So this is how we insert it and this is how we take it. So make sure that you select the type of uh, color that you want. You click and drag to where you want that highlight should be. Another way of doing that, you can highlight it by going to click on the two. It will work for you. So I don't need it. If you don't need the whole this thing, I say stop highlighting. Then the pencil will no more be there. You can see how it was. So if I want this, it should be off. I will just go highlight portion again. Go to where the highlighter is. I will say no what color. It will take it off for me. So this is how we highlight a particular portion of our word. If you want that place should be an important thing for us or for an easy identification. So we just go by that way. So dealing with the highlighter, that's how we use it. Sometimes in our books we have a pen that is called highlighter. When you look at a portion of our passage that we realize this place is very very important for me, we will just use the highlighter to highlight and therefore tick. Sorry for the interruption. Um so as I was talking about the highlighters, I said and sometimes in our day-to-day uh, -day work, sometimes when we are reading some passages and realize that there are some very, very important places for us, we use a pen to um, highlight, a pen that's called a highlighter to highlight some portions that we need. We know that they are very, very important for us that we will be in need of those portions or those informations. That's how the highlighter also works here. So you take note of how to use the highlighter. There is a the difference between the highlighter and when you are using the normal highlight that we used to apply for, the that one, you click and drag, and then whatever you do, it will affect it. But this one, it will highlight that portion. When you print, it's going to, the shade is going to be there for you. That's how it is. But this highlight, the other highlights are when you highlight and you print the document, that highlight will not come. It's just to help you to be able to apply changes to the text or the document that you have. So you take note of those two differences. Now, as we are done with how to use our um, superscripts and the subscripts, there's one thing that I want us to also cross check on, especially copying how to save our document. When you finish with this, saving the document is one of the key things that you have to also know. You go to file, we have what save and save us, and the save is used to save an already existing file, or to is used to modify the work to apply changes to already existing work using the savers the savers is used to save a new created document that is the work of it i hope you find this tutorial helpful and see you in the next tutorial bye for now